Laz Udeze uh, joining us via Zoom as we continue to get uh, different opinions to this development. Dr. Laz, good morning and thanks for joining us. If you can hear us, Dr. Laz, let's get your perspective on the developments uh, with the increased security presence across states in the country and the position of different sects. Some are pro-government, uh, some are protesting against the protesters, and others are also going about their peaceful businesses. Well, thank you. Uh, happy to be on the program today. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's kind of been interesting uh, watching the political and governance space, especially over the past two weeks, uh, as it relates to what is called the end bad governance protest. Um, this is not the first time protests will happen in Nigeria, and it will not be the last time, definitely. Um, you know, Section 39 and Section 40 of the 1999 Constitution you know, gives Nigerians the right to freely express themselves and also to gather freely and express themselves. And of course, uh, that freedom is not absolute. Uh, there are certain instances where those uh, freedoms or rights uh, may be curtailed. But as a citizen, uh, I do not think protest is a bad thing. If it is, then our constitution wouldn't have made provision for that. And citizens, we should have a country where citizens can freely express themselves. However, uh, I've seen in the past uh, few days or weeks, deliberate effort by state actors to suppress the, you know, the citizens from expressing themselves. One would have expected that since uh, certain groups or citizens uh, had said they want to have protests for what they call end bad, in gover uh, end bad governance, the, the security agents, the gather intelligence, they say they got intelligence that is going to go violent. If they have such intelligence that some persons want to do something not acceptable, of course, violence is never acceptable uh, under any guise. You know, they should take steps to make sure that that doesn't happen. They should take steps to make sure that uh, those who are gathering gather freely and express themselves freely without any intimidation, molestation, threats by anybody, including other citizens who might have different opinions. Those who think that, okay, they are very happy with the situation of the country, they also have the right to say, yes, uh, we are happy. Uh, we are not hungry. We, are, we love everything that is happening in the country. Yes, free expression. You know, everybody, different opinions. What, what? It's the job of the security agents to make sure that different groups are able to express themselves within the ambits of the law. Well, 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 I'm not uh, quite happy with how it has gone so far because it's uh, the energy that has been deployed to make sure that citizens don't feel to look some kind of scaremongering, some kind of subtle threats, that some kind of ways to demonize protest. For me, uh, I, I found that uncomfortable in what, the what, democratic what, sense. Dr. Eze, your, your last uh, statement uh, concerning um, you know, some stakeholders trying to demonize the protest or criminalize it in this sense. Uh, let me just uh, quickly make reference to an infographic that came in this morning uh, from the Premium Times where the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sawolu, asked, and I quote, is a protest the catalyst for progress we need now? Will it ensure our challenges vanish in 10 days? Will it lower food prices or inspire economic growth? I strongly believe it won't, unquote. What do you make of this statement coming in from the Lagos State Governor? Uh, I'm sorry, there was a bit of a uh, sound challenge. I didn't get part let, of the let, statement. Let, let, me, let me take it again. Let me take it again. And I quote, is a protest the catalyst for progress we need now? Will it ensure our challenges vanish in 10 days? Will it lower food prices or inspire economic growth? 
I strongly believe it won't. End of quote. Yes, uh, that, that, that's the opinion of, of the governor. You know, uh, of course, uh, leaders generally are not comfortable when people protest, when people give uh, dissenting opinions. I usually use uh, the narrative of a mosquito, a man, you know. No, a mosquito is very small and um, uh, you can easily hit it and it, it dies on the spot. But if you are you, in the studio, if one mosquito is making noise in your ear, you know, you are not going to be comfortable. Uh, as you mean, uh, you have a lot of that and they are just coming towards your ear to make some noise, it's going to distract you from whatever you're doing. So people in authorities get distracted, you know, uh, whenever, okay, people come to uh, give some dissent and clear cut on the street. But there's no democracy without, uh, you know, protest. And thankfully, a lot of persons who are in authorities today have been part of protests in the past. They were not killed and they were not stopped. In, in, they fully the expressed themselves. In, in the president of the and country. In, in, absolutely. They freely expressed themselves, uh, you know, on the street, uh, on social media. So I do not, it doesn't quite, I don't know, there's some kind of anxiety and panic attack. And I'm looking at some of these things from the mental health perspective. You know, what do these people know that we don't know? Why are they so scared? You well, know, so some people are of the what opinion are we not, that, what that are we not government seeing? and security what agencies seeing? have sort of overblown the uh, the impact or the severity of the protest itself even before uh, it, it started taking place today uh, they sort of made it larger than than it should have been this in fact some of the protest planners have even made this statement uh, now the big question that i'm throwing to you now is what exactly is the reason for this um uh, overblowing of the situation <laughs> I wouldn't know. I'm not the one that will know the situation. It's the authorities uh, that, that will be in the best position to answer that. Uh, you know, I'm also bewildered, uh, you know, that there is this kind of panic. So much energy and so much resources being deployed to make it appear like, you know, protest is a sin. Uh, pro some even use language like treason. Some are equating this to violence. You know, as a citizen, I've, I've been part of a number of uh, protests, even right from the university where I was uh, part of the Student Union leadership. You know, in, in Abuja, uh, you know, there's been occupying Nigeria. I was part of the Bring Back Our Girls, you know, where we led protests to say that we can't have this number of children abducted from their families and in our view, uh, the government uh, wasn't handling it in, in the right way. Uh, I've been part of marches to create awareness on issues. Not too young to run movement. At a certain point, we marched on the street uh, to demand that you know the constitutional amendment age reduction uh, should happen. So, you know, there has been all sorts of uh, kind of peaceful uh, protests in different parts of the country. And from my experience, as someone that joined a, a number of courses uh, on the street on social media adding my view or as as, as a citizen is usually very rare you know you never say never but usually very rare for any kind of protest to become violent except the state wants it to be violent now, now dr Lars, we'll come back to you in a bit let's get broader perspectives it's interesting to hear you talk about the chronicles of protest and how nigeria has evolved with the constitutional provisions for citizens to air their grievances peacefully. We have some correspondents waiting to join the show. And from the nation's capital this morning, uh, Fumi Lola Deemi is waiting on standby to give us a situation report from the areas she has visited as well. Hello, Fumi, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Very well, we can see a cross section of protesters gathered in view. Can you bring us up to speed? What are they protesting for? Are they for the hashtag end bad governance or are they protesting against the protesters? Okay, um, uh, 
um, currently they are at the MKO Abiola Stadium and they are protesting for uh, uh, for the N bad governance. They are all clamoring that they are, there is hunger in the in the city and they need change. They need government to intervene to give you a um, what they want to do. Here they are demanding that, that, that there is hunger in the land. The economy is high. high. The um, um, there is scarcity. There, there is um, high food, food, food prices. prices. So they are all protesting that the government should intervene and there should be a change. Well, well, for me, uh, I can see quite a number of people behind you, uh, especially the one with the hashtag and uh, bad governance, uh, um, and somebody with a megaphone. Uh, is there a leader there uh, uh, of the group where you are standing? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, now. For now, there is no leader, there is no visible leader in this protest. They are all outside, and they say they have no leader, but they are all out for one voice. They are all out to ask that um, they are all clamoring for a good governance. No leader. Okay, we'd like for your cameraman to pan and give us more views of the persons. We can see security engaging the protesters. Uh, feel free to tell your cameraman to also pan and give us an overview of the congregation of protesters. Can you give us an estimate of what the size is like? Yeah, um, well, right now we can, you can see now the, um, the presence of security operators all around here. They are all telling the protesters to be peaceful as much as possible. In as much as it is their civic right to protest, but there should be law abiding in doing that. That's why we have the security of the cross section of security of ranging from the police, the civil defense, the road federal safety corps, the soldiers, even the commissioner of police, CP. Um, he just arrived here now and he's, he's here at the at the scene all right well whilst we come to get a clearer view of this protest we still have dr Lars today uh, dr Lars, you're very familiar with protests in abuja you've been part of it listing a chronicle of protest we can see security presence and now whilst protesting the engagement is that they protest peacefully we can see some of them with megaphones with the flags and placards and so far so good uh, they're not being restrained from protesting what do you make of this development <laughs> yeah me too I, I see more security personnel than even the protest uh, those who are protesting and that's not unexpected because that's uh, the playbook uh, that they've been able to play up in the past couple of weeks uh, by subtly threatening the people equating protests to violence some even equated it to death some equated it to treason uh scaremongering you know all kind of tactics just to make sure that uh people don't come out on the street but you know there are different ways of protesting whatever happens protest has happened already since monday people have been protesting those who are doing all right dr Lars, we see the commissioner of police and the fct approaching the protesters we're hoping that he would uh, make a statement our correspondent is struggling to get her microphone to get audio is uh directing the protesters away from where they are uh, stay with us. Uh, let's revisit the feed we're getting coming in from the field this morning and once the cp makes his remarks we'll come back to you from what i understand uh it seems as though he's urging them to go into the mishuda biola stadium well i certainly do uh, believe that is what uh, he's urging them to do considering the fact that the igp had uh, earlier requested that they stay in confined uh, zones both in lagos and in abuja and uh, seeing that they are protesting right in front of the uh, mishuda biola uh, uh, stadium of course uh he it will only be proper for him to ask them to go inside however i doubt if um, the protesters will be willing to step into the stadium and remain there and th their aim would certainly be to remain on the streets and rally around the streets uh, uh you know expressing their grievances uh, towards the uh, government it's also important to get perspective because we've listened to a number of correspondents coming in 
from Bielsa. We're hoping we can get our correspondent in Uyo joining. But the FCT has been uh, the most uh, involving, as we can see. Uh, remember, the courts have issued statements uh, urging protesters to be confined to the Freedom and Peace Parks in Lagos, whilst in the FCT, it's the MKO Abiola Stadium. Dr. Laz, uh, the protesters are insistent on a public progression. Uh, do you think that this confined arrangement somewhat defeats the essence of the protest in their views, or is it the best approach in ensuring that peace and law is kept? Well, I, I think the, the protest have been issue uh, as always been intended to be peaceful. Um, you know, like I said, it's rare for people, people who want to destroy things and cause violence are not likely to give notice, you know, to tell you that, okay, uh, we are coming to from these dates to come and start destroying lives and properties. In most cases, you know, uh, they don't do that. They, they just get out and start doing what they have planned to do take everybody on our words because when you give notice you are saying oh prepare for us and all of that it's mainly uh terrorists uh, who are so armed that they feel they can overpower uh the security architecture that you know give advance notice you know uh, to carry out things like that so i think there's a lot of, even from the visuals you showed there's a lot of interference you know we have few people there carrying uh, messages and flags I, I don't i didn't see anyone carrying weapons is the security agents who are carrying weapons and they're even more in number than those you know they are trying to you know couldn't they just allow them stay where they are display their flags and freely say whatever they want to say you know so not that they just the sort of peace of stay here move there and those are things that sometimes provoke because when people are coming to say we are not happy that this thing is happening, they are angry, for, you know, based on the hunger and other excuses, you know, they may have. And you come, oh, stay here, move here, you know, all those kind of interference is also what sometimes annoys. And if one uh, just shouts and says, no, stop pushing me, you see them start mis handling the person. And those are the things that... Uh, potentially leads to conflagration. All, all, all right, Dr. Lars, just throw your thoughts there. Is. Let's get back into the field. There are more updates coming in from our correspondent here in the FCT, Fumilolaya DME, who is presently in front of the MK Abiola Stadium, where the Commissioner of Police in the FCT, CP Bennett Igwe, is also present alongside protesters. Let's return to Fumi and get more updates on this developing story. Hello, Fumi. Can you hear us? All right, now let's have updates. What yeah, did yeah, 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 yeah. say? Okay, uh, presently, presently the, the Commissioner of Police, Police FCTCP, Bennett Igwe, Igwe, is here, is here and, and um, is um, actually, actually telling, telling the, the processors, processors to move, move into, into the, the stadium, 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 to move, move into, into the stadium, stadium to emphasize their franchise, franchise, but, but they, they are refusing. refusing. They're saying they say it is their, their right, right to protest on the street. The street. There is a street protest and they are not here for, for athletes. athletes. So that, that is what, what is going, going on right, right now. now. They're, they're now, we do see... They are trying to argue with um, the CP. If the CP is making an address, is it possible to get uh, what he's saying? I can see there seems to be a press briefing going on behind you. Who is addressing those group of individuals? It's not the CP that is actually addressing. It's one of the leader of the protesters. Can, can, can we get, uh, can um, we get addressing some from, from the, the press? press. Well, Let, let's let's just get. Um, I, I believe that's a prominent that uh, activist. Uh, uh, marry me. We uh, want a situation uh, where the protest will not degenerate. I have advised the FCTCP. If they want the protest to degenerate, so be it. If they don't appreciate our interventions in here, as Nigerians who are also aggrieved and protesting. You, 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 you are all witnesses that today will not be the first time police go attack us. We are already used to police attack. Now, like, normal, normal. So, so, so for me, for me, the, 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 the protesters have the right to protest under our laws. Also, also, we have a duty. We have a duty to ensure that the protesters are peaceful. So, I will intervene. I will talk to the staff. Let's talk to some of the staff in a very, very small manner. 
very, very, very good. And you can see so far, for the past three hours, two and a half hours since we've been here, here, the protest has been extremely peaceful. So there's no cause for alarm. Thank you. Well, well, coming back to, to you about Fumi, uh, we can see Barrister Deji there uh, sporting a Take It Back uh, t-shirt. Uh, this uh, simply shows that he's actively a part of the protest planners and uh, of course this also confirms, uh, you know, the fact that there are a lot of people or activists back in the protest. The, the, the key point of their, their protest is that they're, they're saying no to intimidation, that they don't want to be intimidated by the police officers, that they are used to um, the police intimidating them before, but now they are out to stand for their right, and they will say no to intimidation. They say they are not here for outlets, so they are going to do a street protest, which is what is going on right now. Well, well I, I agree that um, the, the, the CP asking them to go into the Boshuda Biola Stadium and remain there in a confined space will certainly undermine the uh, essence of what the protest is all about. Do you know if there are any plans of the protesters processing, uh, you know, proceeding with their protest on the street to other parts of uh, the city center? Okay, Hello. Peter, am I still with you? Yes, uh, whilst we try to sort out that uh, slight glitch in here in Fumi, uh, we'll, we'll come back okay. to get uh, Dr. Uh, Laz's closing thoughts before we let him go. Yeah? Uh, Dr. Laz. Now, we've, we've, looked at, we've looked at the list of demands by the Take It Back movement. We just have less than five minutes with you this morning before we say our goodbyes. How realistic are some of the demands the Take It Back movement is making? A, a long one uh, i wouldn't say it's a take it back movement list uh, is you know uh, demands nigerians have been making you know if you be following those who have been appearing on your station on other media stations um writing opinion articles uh, posting their thoughts on social media you know those demands essentially capture in, in many issues that are of concern to nigerians are they realistic of course they are they are realistic it's doable uh, but not everything can be done at the moment overnight in the timeline so uh, so some could be done on a short term some could be uh, on the longer term but there is need to see that commitment i wish uh, the kind of energy and the deliberate effort that has been made in the past uh, couple of weeks is uh, you know towards stopping this protest from happening if that kind of energy had been deployed towards issues that have been of concern to nigerians you know maybe we could have made much more progress as a people uh, you know, leadership is tough. Uh, the economy in Nigeria globally, you know, especially post COVID-19, uh, you know, has not been excellent, but the right of citizens to express themselves is something that the authorities should be open to at any particular time. You know, you do your best, communicate effectively uh, to the citizens, communicate your policies and even in the body language you know because it's not just about talking people also want to see what you're doing so if what you're saying and uh, what is being done are not aligning it will make the citizens lack hope it will make them lose confidence so uh, i think uh, our security although looking at the history of the nigerian police force since uh, 1930 that both the northern and south came together uh, it appears is in the dna of our you know security to be oppressive many times towards uh, the people from the colonial days where it was used to you know harass colonial agitator uh, independence uh, agitators our founding fathers you know were harassed our traditional rulers you know were harassed you know, to post independence, uh, military regime many years that, you know, didn't allow citizens to voice, uh, you know, to express themselves in a manner that, or maybe say things that government doesn't want to hear. So over time, it kind of became uh, a culture within the establishment of our 
you know security to be uh, against any time the people want to express themselves except the government of the day uh, you know doesn't uh, you know just want to uh, uh, interfere in the situation i think this needs to change in a democracy you know when people are not happy and you don't allow them to just speak you know in a peaceful manner and that anger bottles up it may result to even uh, something bigger that the government might deploy more resources to handle and we wouldn't want that uh, to get to that situation uh, nigerians should be able to gather peacefully the police have also allowed a number of peaceful protests you know where the people move uh, you know, we've watched uh, clips in Lagos and some other parts of the country where people were moving and saying they don't want protest. That's also a protest, you know, and nobody harassed them. Nobody told them to go inside one building and stay and express themselves. They moved on the streets and they were announcing, no, we don't want protest. Don't come out and protest. And it's within their rights to do so, to say, oh, we don't want protest. The same way those who say, oh, we, we are not, we are hungry, we are not happy should also, you know, peacefully express themselves and, you know, the police being there not to disturb them or harass them, but to provide protection to make sure that, you know, bad people don't uh, take the advantage of this situation. Thank, thank, thank you to, very much, to, Dr. Lazarude, for taking our time to review this developing story with us. Uh, we're hoping in the course of our subsequent uh, reviews we'll also have more objective insights from you as well. Thanks for having me.